So good morning, everybody, and welcome to our webinar on web analytics tools and their role in optimization. So this very much is following on from um, last week's session on performance metrics and what they mean. So feel free yeah, to check that one out as well as uh, this session as well. So thank you for, for joining. So let's kick off. So content today, what we're going to be looking at, um, I split up into these five sections. So we're going to look at the importance of web analytics in optimization. So, you know, why, why, why should we be worrying about this stuff? Um, an overview of some web analytics tools, uh, setting up those tools as well and, and the tracking, how we can do that. Um, the data analysis and insights, looking at some of the key metrics within there as well. And then some optimization strategies uh, that we can go down to, to constantly improve. Let's, let's kick into the content. So what is the importance of web, web analytics? Why are we looking at this? Uh, and why do we ultimately want to kind of optimize um, our site in the first place? So the fir first thing is, is understanding your user behavior. So we've all kind of got a, you know, an ideal client profile or a target audience that we're trying to reach through our uh, websites uh, to, to you know, improve and, and grow our business and organization. So by understanding the user behavior of the, the types of people that come into the website, what they're looking for, um, what they're doing when they actually get to the site, allows us to use intelligence and data to, to make decisions to improve that um, ultimately user experience at the back of it. And you know, if you've been on these webinars over the past uh, couple of months, you, user experience is, is a key and I always go, uh, I'm always talking about it. So. Uh, the reason we want to uh, uh, look at user behavior is we end up with people like this. Here he is again, happy users. We want them to, to continually engage with our business, come back and keep using our services. So uh, yeah, we want a big thumbs up from our users. The other thing is tracking performance. So along with that user behavior, we want to understand, um, again, we, you know, we're, we're all doing kind of marketing campaigns, we're posting on socials, we're doing paid ad campaigns, we're uh, sending out mailers, we're doing webinars, we're doing all, this, all, all these things. We want to understand um, from the people who are coming to our website, how much they engage in, where are they coming from, have they interacted with that marketing content, um, and just making sure that what we're doing is actually working. So it's, it's about tracking that performance and understanding um, which efforts may be working better than others or how, how you can kind of improve that over time as well. Um, and then ultimately, it's driving uh, that optimization. So you're, you're gathering that data, you're understanding what, like I say, what people are doing on the site, what, uh, where they're coming from, what they're interacting with, um, and it drives that, that continuous optimization of the website so that you can um, improve that user experience for your users, improve your, your services and offerings as well, um, and continue to continually grow as a business um, over time. So that's why we need to look at analytics. Um, so what are some good tools to look at um, if you haven't done before? So the overview that we're going to look at today are two main tools. Now, there are obviously more tools that you can use for, um, for analytics, but uh, conscious of this is kind of like a 30, 45 minute session, so it would be here all day if we went into loads of them. Um, but the two we're going to look at today primarily are Google Analytics, so GA4, um, and Hotjar. Now, I would imagine most of you have come across Google Analytics before. You've heard about it. It's been around for years and years. Um, Hotjar, you may or may not have come across, and we'll dig into a bit more how that pairs up with analytics and can add just another layer of really interesting data um, for you to work with. So first up is um, Google Analytics. So GA4, as we call it nowadays, it used to be uh, well, what was effectively GA3, the third version, was called uh, Universal Analytics, and that got retired uh, July last year, so it's now moved across into GA4. Um, there was a big kind of hoo-ha when that happened because they've fundamentally changed how some things work, um, but it's essentially kind of the same platform and, and uh, it's, it's all about kind of tracking your users and how they're interacting with your site. So what is Google Analytics good for? Now, um, it does cross-platform tracking. So what that means is if you've got you know a website at, or a mobile app and other digital platforms that you're using your your uh, your users are interacting with, you can put uh, Google Analytics on all of those systems. So you're not just getting data for your website; you're also getting it um, for you know other systems that you you've created, or like I say, like a mobile app or something that's not directly um, the website. So you can you can gather all that data in one place and understand um, how certain areas are performing. Um, it's got reporting features. So again, if, if most of you have been in here, you, you know there's there's graphs and uh, filters and all kinds of different things that you can use to understand that data itself. You can look at it uh, kind of like month on month or year on year, so you can understand trends. Um, 
And there's also more and more kind of AI powered insights coming into that as well, um, as well as kind of pred predictive metrics so that you can um, you can analyze that data and sort of understand, you know, what is working where, um, where to kind of focus your, your uh, attention as well. Um, it's event driven. So what this, uh, th this is a really important one kind of to focus on as well, because universal analytics was more session driven, which means that it was about uh, kind of page views and when people come to the site, how long they spend on the site and which pages they, they access. Whereas GA4 has fundamentally gone into event driven. So it's drilled down into more granular detail in that user behavior. Whereas it's not just, they still look at a session. So how long someone comes to the site and stays on that site but also the events that take place while they're interacting with your site. So are they, you know, how long are they spending on, on a page? Could be an event if it goes above 10, uh, 10 seconds. Also, if um, they interact with a call to action or um, if they uh, submit a form that might be that they interact with, you can essentially set up what these are. Um, but these events uh, will, will kind of give you that more granular data again. So you can see they've been on this page, but they've also clicked on this button, they've downloaded this file, and it's getting that bit more granular detail in terms of what they're actually doing. Um, you can also look at the customer kind of life, life, life cycle track. Uh, life cycle track so you can see where they've come from so the source of that uh, user and we'll, we'll dig into some of these metrics uh, a bit, bit later as well um, but you can see the source of them the pages that they visited where they've exited the site the kind of things that they've interacted with so it gives you a good um, indication of of how people are, are you know entering and exiting the site how they're interacting with different elements as well and, and gives you a, a good uh, level of data there um, and then integrations is, a, is an important one as well. So GA, you know, as you can imagine, GA4 integrates with things like Google Ads, Google Search Console, and, and other Google marketing platforms as well. Um, and it also integrates with um, Hotjar, which is why you know, this is a, another good tool which uh, goes alongside Google Analytics, Analytics as well. Now, there are other tools like Hotjar that do similar things, but um, this is one that we've used a lot in the past here at Webbox, um, and it's one that we, we like to promote and talk about as a, as a good tool to use. Now, if you've not come across Hotjar before, what it is, um, is another user behavior tool, but what it does is tracks the user's mouse as they come to the website. Um, now, this might sound a bit kind of like weird and invasive, but you don't have any personal identifiable uh, information of who that person is. Um, but you can literally go into recorder sessions and, and see the mouse moving around. And as more and more people come to the website and that data builds up, you ultimately get heat maps. So um, it will do heat maps based on your mouse, but also you'll get heat maps that you can do for different pages of the site. Um, so you can do scroll maps, which look similar to this. Um, I've had to split this in two just because of the, the size of it. But um, what this essentially shows you is uh, red is the, the areas that most people have, have you know, scrolled to or been, uh, been on uh, in, in their web page. And then blue is where the, you know, the least amount of people have been to. So it's just hot and cold. So you can see in your on your home page, on your uh, product pages, on all the key kind of pages on your on your or service pages on your on your website, how far people are scrolling down the page. And this is really really useful because you if you've got um, say a really good example is if you've got some sort of social proof. So it might be like a FIFO integration or um, like you know it could be TripAdvisor. It could be something that says you know we have five out of five. We're we're amazing. But it's it's so far down the page and nobody's actually scrolling down to it. It allows you to use that data to make the decision to let's move that up the page. So it's somewhere where you know it might not be right at the top, but it's most of the most of the users are actually scrolling and seeing that that element because these again are the the kind of um, the elements on the page which drive conversion and drive uh, the, the the users to to take action. So it's really really interesting to look at this and and use it uh, effectively. It could be you know again I've used that as an example, but it could be a, a call to action or a form or something that you want someone to interact with, but people aren't scrolling to it. The other element of this again is is click maps as well. So this example picture I've got here is actually from the Hotjar website. So they're using this the, as an example, and it was from their careers page. So what they've got um, in the kind of center uh, lower down on the page is a is a video. And what they were saying related to this is they've got around 3,000 views on this page um, and only 0.02% actually clicked on that video. And their initial thought was, well, you know, for careers, we want to show people, um, you know, how our AGMs work, how our meetings work, our culture, and, and people will click on a video and they want to watch that. But when they've actually looked at the data back, 
no, no one is clicking on it. Now, it could be that it's, it's the size of where the video is. It could be that people would rather read about it than watch a video. So it just, again, it allows you to um, kind of go, you know, should we make that video more prominent on the page? Should we uh, guide people to it with, with you know, more, uh, more imagery or guide them into that area? So it helps you make that decision. You can see on this heat map uh, as well, the click map, that most people have clicked on that button kind of uh, under, the, under the title and the carousel over on the right-hand side. So again, it, it helps you understand where people are, are clicking on different elements. And, you know, again, you can move things around or change if people aren't clicking on your call to action or what you want them to access, um, you can use that data to um, update it. Uh, then session recordings. So like I say, you've, you've got these heat maps, but you can also go into individual recordings. So um, on certain pages, it may be that you want to get a better idea in terms of when someone's coming on this page, you know, what, where, where is the mouse going? What are they actually hovering over? Um, and by watching these, again, you can get a good idea in terms of if people are just sort of scrolling past or, or ignoring a call to action or a, or a form or an image or whatever it is you want someone to interact with. Um, and it just, again, it's a great, a great level of data and detail to um, understand that user behavior because where you've got GA4 it might be that um, you know you can see that people are coming to this page or loads of people are visiting the home page or the product page um, this gives you that bit more granular detail in terms of the actual behavior on the page um, other things that it also does is it allows you to set up user surveys and polls on the website so you can gather that more uh, quantitative data rather than the, the uh, sorry the qualitative data rather than the quantitative data um, there, I'll go into it in a minute, but there are different like paid tiers that allow you to do these different things. So the uh, the heat maps are more the, the standard thing and the, the servers and polls come into it uh, afterwards. Um, the, and ultimately, this is kind of the behavior analytics. So like I say, it's allowing you to understand what people are actually doing and their behavior on the pages so that you can make those intelligent decisions around design and content and, and improve that user experience. Um, so yeah, it's a really great tool to have a look at if you haven't uh, haven't looked at it before. And if you have got it, but you haven't really looked at the data, um, I really suggest you know get get in there and, and start um, analyzing it and seeing what people are doing on your site. It's really interesting. So ultimately, with these two tools, you know what's the damage? This is the the, the ultimate question: How much is it going to cost me? So first up, um, good news is Google Analytics four is free. So you know you can install that; it's free forever, um, and it will work on the, on your site. Um, that'll again gather that uh, analytics data in terms of like demographics and and user behavior, and different pages that they're accessing. Um, Hotjar, I say, is free with a caveat of it's free-ish. So there's a free um, basic version that you can um, install on your site. You set up your account and uh, get it on the site. That allows for um, data gathering from 35 daily sessions. Um, you can create unlimited heat maps within that, though, and you can also integrate it um, with HubSpot. So if you use that as a CRM, then you can um, integrate that data uh, as well. And then there are, like I say, different kind of like paid tiers. So the, the next tier up is a plus tier, which is about £30 a month. Um, that goes up to then 100 daily sessions. Um, it also allows you to filter or segment data. So when you're um, getting a, you know, gathering data, you can do a bit more with it. Uh, and it also allows you to access an events API so you can track user actions a bit more um, granularly and understand a bit more data. So uh, again, it goes up from there, depending on how many kind of page views you have a month. If you've obviously got thousands and thousands and thousands, then it, the, the price goes up a bit. But um, yeah, it's, it's just definitely an interesting one to, to take a look at. So with these tools, it's all very well that you know we're, we're talking about them, but setting them up and tr the tracking is uh, another element as well. So I want to quickly cover how you set these up on your site because if you you know you may already have GA4 installed, but if you haven't got Hotjar, um, what do you actually do around that? Um, I'm not going to go into huge levels of detail because it could uh, get get quite confusing. So Hotjar first up, um, I've done this one first because it's probably the the most straightforward. Um, and I've done it like this in the slide, just so that when I send it through, that you've got this uh, access as well. But obviously, you can you can like Google it and find uh, find instructions. So um, basically, you want to you want to start off, ensure that your platform is compatible with Hotjar. So that uh, when you get the slides, that is actually a link to a page on the Hotjar website, which tells you if it is or not. Um, you know, things like uh, m m most platforms will be, but things like I think it lab uh, lists uh, kind of Squarespace, Shopify. Um, there are plugins for that. Um, some and uh, uh, you know there are some platforms that it doesn't doesn't quite support but if you've got a either like a bespoke website or a wordpress site or something like that then um, you're more than likely going to have uh, be able to uh, uh, integrate with it 
Um, so essentially, you just you set up your account. Um, you go in when you go into your account. You can add your website to it, um, and you put your URL in. Then um, you could, it will give you a, a tracking code basically. So you can you can copy that. Either give it to your developer, and they can install it. Um, and they they put it into the head. So like I say, I've gone into the bit of detail there. But they put it into the head of the the web page, uh, and you want to put that on kind of every page of the website so that it can track across every page. Um, if you uh, have something like WordPress or Squarespace or Shopify. There are plugins to do this as well. So, like I say, if you you know if you've got WordPress, you can go in, look for the Hotjar official uh, plugin, install that, and then there's um, you go into your Hotjar account and you can put a uh, basic copy across an ID and set it up in, a, in in that way as well. Again, if it's something that you you're not particularly comfortable with, get your kind of agency or developer to take a look at it and they can sort it out for you. But that will essentially that'll start collecting data. Then when you go into your account, you can create your heat maps or click maps or whatever it is, and you, you basically select the page that you want um, the heat map from, and it will it will gather all that data that, from the recorded sessions and put them um, into a heat map for you. And you can do it by kind of like date filter and all those kind of things. So um, yeah, you can start playing around with that. Um, GA4, the initial um, kind of installation for GA4 is very similar to Hotjar, um, but then it can get more complicated down the road in terms of all of the setup of it. So essentially with, with GA4, a similar kind of process, you want to make sure you've got like a Google account, you want to set, up, uh, set that up in, in um, Google Analytics as well. Then when you go into Google Analytics, you create a, a GA4 property and a data stream. So again, you know, the, 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 you can you can kind of Google what, what this looks like and uh, some, some screenshots of it. Um, but once you've got that set up, you then get the uh, the the um, the, the tracking code that you can download. Again, you can give that to um, your, your developer to install in the head of the web, web page across the page. Um, and you know, they'll, they'll put that in place and it will start tracking. The other ways that you can do this again, which aren't as manual, you can do it through Google Tag Manager um, and you can also do it through plugins. So whether you've again got kind of like a WordPress website, whatever it might be, um, then you can you can use those to make it a bit more, more simple if you're not too techy or you don't have access to the, the code itself. Um, the other steps of this, which I didn't want to go into today just because um, you know, it, it could make you all fall asleep, is the uh, or it could get, get too confusing. Are with GA4, um, once you've installed it, whereas like Hotjar will start gathering that data and you can look at it, um, GA4 will start gathering data, but you want to um, essentially set up goals and events in the uh, it, it, within GA4 as well. So it will have some out of the box, but you want to make sure that you set up your uh, your custom events. So whether that's you know somebody's um, clicking on a call to action or, or uh, submitting a form or whatever that might be, you set up these events and then you can set those events to be conversion uh, metrics as well. So we'll, we'll talk about the kind of metrics afterwards, but that's uh, the, the additional layers of the data in terms of how you um, you know you can set that up. I actually thought when I was putting this together that that might be a bit more of a niche webinar down the line. So if anyone is interested in that, um, let me know and we can um, we can put a session on where it goes into that a bit more detail so you can see how to correctly set that up um, and, and you know ultimately kind of manage that data going forwards. The other good thing with these two tools is that um, you can integrate them both together. So Hotjar integrates with um, uh, with GA4. So where we've again got you know two two different areas of data, we want to ultimately put it all in one place so we can look at it. So yeah, take a look at that. Again, I'm going into the huge detail on how that works, but um, the 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 both both tools uh, play nicely together. So you can um, yeah integrate and, and gather that data and, and put it together, which is really useful. So then moving into step four, we're looking at data analysis and um, insights. So um, essentially, you know, once we've got these tools in place, we want to obviously look at the data, understand what it's doing and what is that actually um, telling us. So once we've got those in place, we like I say the data is going to start collecting. Hotjar will will start doing those uh, session recordings out of the box. Then you can set up the heat maps, the click maps from different pages, the, you know, essentially the pages that you're more interested in. Um, and that's particularly useful if when you're looking at your GA4 data and maybe um, you know the engagement rate's not so great on a page or um, the, the session time on a page isn't very long, then you can you can look at the heat maps on that and kind of understand what, what the user behavior is of that particular page. Um, and ultimately, once we start collecting this data, there's some key metrics that we want to look at as well. Now, 
there's tons and tons of metrics, primarily in GA4. Um, like I say, um, Hotjar out of the box is a bit more simplistic in terms of the amount of, amount of things that you need to look at. But um, I, I've written this down just because there's a, a high number. But GA4, it says, has at least 165 dimensions across 16 categories and 99 metrics across 10 categories. Um, and what that means is the the dimensions are, are things like uh, the kind of demographic data and the metrics are the kind of more numerical data where it where it adds up like page views and those kind of things um so there's there's tons and tons of data that are in there but some of the key ones that you want to look at are just listed out here initially i'm not going to go through them on this slide but i'll go through them um so some of the key ones uh, individually but i want to put these in just so that you've got a list of them as well um, if you Google as well, kind of like key metrics, um, you will find articles about them and about a bit more detail about what they uh, actually mean as well. So if you want to kind of dig into them a bit more detail, then you can uh, look at them there. But we'll we'll look at a selection of these now um, in a bit more detail. So um, within GA4, you've got users, and this is split down into total new and active users as well. So um, your total users is is under you know it helps you essentially. Um, understand the kind of growth or the um, of your user base over time. So you can uh, again, where you're using the reporting within this, you can um, break it down like by month on month or by year on year. So you can have a look at you know your total number of users over that time and understand whether that you know ultimately it's growing or shrinking or what's happening with that over time. Um, new users, this is really important as well in terms of attracting new new um, or understanding how many new users are coming to the website. So if you're you know putting out marketing campaigns, if you're going to events, whatever it might be, you want to understand how how effectively that is working. How many more people are you actually getting to the website? And then active users. Uh, this is a really key one as well because it's the you've got the total users, the new users, and then the active users are people who are actually kind of engaging with your website once they come to it. Um, and we'll talk about what an engaged session is a little bit later. But again, this is just going to give you an indication in terms of how well your website is working and your content is is working in terms of your your users and target audience as well. Sorry, to have a sip. Um, then we've got page views. So th this is a similar one that we would have in uh, Universal Analytics as well. Um, but this is really important because it tells you the, the total number of pages that people are actually visiting and viewing um, when they're coming to the website. So um, we'll look at sessions next. But this is when someone comes to the site and uh, in, is in a session, which means it's like from the time they enter the site to the time they leave the site, this is how many pages they're actually um, visiting as they go through. And you can actually um, look at this and understand the kind of content that's appealing to, to your audience. So, you know, understand which pages are getting the most um, page views and which are getting the least. And then again, you can use that kind of hot jar data to to kind of maybe see why that is. Are people coming into that and then just dis disappearing out? Um, or are they are they spending um, time there but not kind of engaging with it? So you can, uh, it's, it's really useful to look at there. Um, then we've got sessions as well. So we've got sessions and sessions per user. So um, a session has changed slightly from uh, what it used to be, but it, it essentially can be um, any, any kind of length of time. So if somebody comes to the website for, um, you know, uh, 10, 30 seconds, or they come to the website for 30 minutes, um, it all counts as a session. Um, and it, it helps you kind of evaluate the overall traffic and engagement on your site. Um, and it helps you also analyze what uh, customers are doing when they come and arrive on your site. Um, and, and again, how engaged they are. Because if the sessions are longer, then they're spending longer on the site and they're um, uh, ultimately more engaged. If the sessions are very short, then they're coming in and they're dipping out very quickly. Um, also, the sessions per user is very interesting because you can um, see, you know, it, it essentially tells you um, how many people are coming back to the website as well. So. If there's multiple sessions per user, you've got a high number, it means your content's engaging and working well for your audience and they're ultimately coming back and engaging with you as a business. So um, both, are, both are important ones to, to look at. Um, acquisition, so acquisition source, as easy for you to say. Um, so as we mentioned earlier on, looking at the kind of complete user journey and uh, where the, the, the person is actually coming into the website 
and exiting the website, the acquisition source is really important because again, if we're doing mailers, if we're doing PPC campaigns and we're doing social posts, whatever it might be, uh, or, or if it, you know people are just finding us through Google search, we want to understand where they've come from and then what they're actually doing on the site. And, and ultimately that kind of segmentation of the data will help us um, understand that the types of users that come in because someone who comes from Google search might have a completely different user journey to someone who comes from an ad um, or comes from a, an event or a webinar wherever it might be so it's it's really understanding that kind of uh, yeah that level of detail in terms of where they come from and what they're doing when they get there um, and ultimately again it helps you uh, adjust adjust that user journey and uh, the kind of content that those users are looking for um, we've then got engagement rate. So this is a really interesting one because it's new for GA4. Um, and it, it was kind of talked about as it was the opposite of bounce rate. Now, um, it kind of is, but it's also slightly new. So a bounce rate used to be if someone came to your website, but they didn't actually um, interact with anything on the site, uh, and then they left, it would be classed as a bounce. Now, they could come into a web page, they could sit there for 10 minutes, but not actually to click on anything or do anything, and then leave, and that's a class as a bounce. Now, what they've done to combat this is that engagement rate has a certain certain rules. So if someone comes to the website and they stay on there for at least 10 seconds or, or more, um, if they, they're one conversion event, it happens. So it could be, again, they've downloaded a white paper or they've uh, submitted a form. Um, obviously, you know, that could be under 10 seconds, but if one of those events has happened or if they've looked at at least two pages within that session, then that is, an, is classed as an engaged session. Now, we you can still find bounce rate within GA4, but it's essentially the opposite now of engagement rate. So if you've got an engagement rate of 70%, your bounce rate will be 30%. Um, so th this is just a really good way of understanding, again, you know, how engaging your pages are. Are people coming to the site? Are they interacting with the events that you want them to? So if it's, if it's a call to action, if it's a form, um, how long are they spending on the site? Are they, you know, uh, basically, under, that's what, again, the bounce rate used to be. It was, are people coming in and jumping away quickly? Or are they coming in and kind of exploring more of the web's, website? So that's a really uh, uh, important one to look at. There's also an, an average engagement time metric, um, which essentially is like a, a, a timed amount. And you can look at that uh, overall for the whole site and also for individual pages. So you can see, again, how, how long people are kind of spending on site uh, on pages individually as well and how kind of engaged they are during that session, which is, uh, is again, a, a, an important one for your active users. And then ultimately conversions. So this is obviously a really, really important metric. Um, and we want to push people when they come to the site to convert, you know, if they if they turn into they're kind of the leads and they turn into a conversion. Um, so this could be anything from making a purchase to signing up to a newsletter to registering for a webinar or downloading a file. Like we say, there can be um, a huge variation of these on the site and you set them up yourself. So where you set the different events that can take place on the site, because like I say, GA4 is event-based, you wanna track those events. Um, then the conversions, you can set those as conversion um, conversion goals, basically. So it might be that an event could be, you know, somebody clicking on a link to get to another page, but it's not necessarily a conversion. Whereas again, if they're downloading a form or signing up to something, that is a conversion. So uh, this can just be really interesting as well if you've got different forms across your website, so different types of form, or you're trying out different call to actions, you can actually set them as different events and different conversions, and you can see which ones are performing better. Um, so yeah, you know, conversions ultimately are what we're kind of driving towards. So that that, that is uh, one of the, the the most key metric, um, definitely to to look at as well uh, on uh, GA4. Then moving into uh, last but not least, number five is optimization strategies. So we've you know looked at the tools, we've looked at the kind of key metrics that we want to to track here, and then um, what ultimately are the strategies that we want to go down to to make sure that we're uh, implementing the data effectively. So. First off is, is to set, set clear goals. So again, you know, this is going to differ per business, per organization, depending on what you want to do. But um, basically understand what you want to achieve and then kind of work backwards from that. So if you know that you want to increase conversions or increase leads or um, it's you want people to spend more time engaging with your content, then, you know, write all those down. It doesn't need to be digital or, you know, whatever, but, but get those down somewhere. 
and then work backwards backwards from that. So if it, if it is to increase your conversions, then um, use things like Hotjar and GA4 and the data to look at um, where those conversion points are on the website, understand are people actually visiting those pages, um, understand uh, if they are getting to that page but they're not converting, you know, use those kind of heat maps and Hotjar to, to see where they're actually interacting with. Um, and it could even be things like, uh, improving your kind of like marketing outreach. So looking at the the total users and where they're coming from, um, then you know again you can work backwards to see that from this campaign we've had X amount of of uh, new visitors to the site. So yeah, set those clear goals and work backwards from that. Focus on your key metrics. So you know we've identified some of the key metrics across um, GA4 there as well, but focus on the ones that are key to you um, in terms of your business itself. So you know we talked about engagement rate, conversion rate. Um, those are two of the the really kind of um, uh, most important ones. Then the key ones to look at, as well as things like average session duration. So make sure that you're looking at those. Make sure you're comparing them. Um, as well over time and comparing the trends of those over time so again where you can within uh, ga4 look at uh look at the data month on month or year on year understand that you know our, our marketing efforts last year did x y and z and we've done different marketing this year and it's gone up or, or you know it's plateaued or whatever whatever's happening but look at those trends across those different metrics and understand um what to, so you can understand what is working and what isn't working um, also segmenting the data. So we touched on that from the uh, Hotjar perspective, but segmenting data is really, really, really important. And, you know, it's something, you know, I'm not saying that we're, we're perfect here, but, it, you know, it, it does take a lot of effort to do, but um, very much try to do it, especially, you know, I've, do, I've done it a lot during these webinars. So when I was promoting these, I was trying to send emails more to people who hadn't either hadn't signed up because I don't want to bombard them with stuff which isn't relevant to them. Um, because if you were getting emails every week about, oh, come to these webinars and you're already signed up, you're going to go, well, stop bloody emailing me. I, I already am. So segment your data. And that's, like I say, it's not just um, you know, we've got people uh, in the east and people in the west and people in the north and the south or people of this age and that age. It's understanding how they're actually interacting with you as a business. So it could be that people who have converted, people who haven't converted, people who have spent X amount of time on this page, people who have downloaded this kind of content or spent a certain amount of time on a, on a kind of product or service. But yeah, understand that data and start to segment it up in that way so that your, your marketing is much more targeted when you're um, actually um, driving those, those efforts as well. Um, using benchmarks, so look at kind of industry benchmarks as well, uh, and also you can benchmark yourself. So again, where, where we're looking at those trends, it might be the last year you had a, a, use, a user increase of X amount. Use that as a benchmark and try and um, you know with with your goals uh, achieve better uh, with your uh, this year's um, efforts. Also, like I say, look at industry benchmarks, see how you're comparing against them, and what you can do to, to kind of improve that um, over time. Um, identify any bottlenecks. So this is really useful as well in terms of that user journey. So seeing where people are either falling off the the kind of journey or um, you know dropping out, or if there's if there's kind of you know immediate immediate bounces or a lot really low engagement rate on certain pages, it's identifying those areas so that you ultimately can improve them um, and improve your your user user experience, user satisfaction, and that conversion rate at the end of it. Um, and also use visual, visualization tools. Again, that's a hard one to say, but um, this is where obviously within Google Analytics, you have graphs, you have tables, and you have all these things um, going around. But if uh, it, it's, you know, it, not that it's, it's really confusing or hard to use, but if you, you don't necessarily get on with that interface, um, things that you can do and the things that we offer here at Webbox is to use something like Google Looker Studio. So we'll actually set it up for our clients, um, a Google Looker Studio dashboard, which um, pulls in data from GA4, pulls it in from Hotjar, and um, it can even be from like your, your PPC activity or wherever, wherever the data um, you, you want to use comes from. And uh, ultimately, it visualizes the key metrics that you're, you're interested in. So where you set those goals, um, rather than going into GA4 and kind of, you know, having to analyze that manually and look through it, this Looker Studio will just um, give you those key metrics out the back and and pull the pull the data in on a on a live um, a live you know basis. So things like that can make this process a lot easier, especially if you know, like I say, there's kind of a lot of manual work in terms of um, gathering some of those metrics and understanding how they're changing over time.
So yeah, just in review, so just to go through, so like I said, the, the importance of web analytics and optimization, ultimately we wanna gather that data so we can understand how people are either coming to the site, what they're doing on the site and the kind of behaviors that they're, they're, they're uh, going through when they're on the site and we can ultimately make those improvements, especially things like you know that, that, that scroll heat map, we can understand where best to position certain elements or get people engaged. Um, overview, we took a look at GA4 and Hotjar as the primary tools. Like I say, there are more tools, but we would have been here all day. Um, so I've concentrated on those two because they are two uh, main tools in the, in the market that are uh, very good and give you a lot of data to act upon. Um, setting up the web analytics tracking tool. So you can either use a like Google Tag Manager or plug in to make that a bit easier if you want to do it more manually. Um, like I say, you can, you can generate the tracking code and get the developer to install that um, on the site for you. Uh, data analysis and insights. So we looked at some of those key metrics, um, you know, events, conversions, uh, session times, engagement rates. These are all the, the important metrics to take a look at. So please look at those when I send the slides over and see which ones um, are most important to you. And then optimization strategy. So it's similar to last week, but ultimately it's, you know, setting those goals, understanding um, what you need to look at, which metrics are most important to those goals and how you can, um, you, you can achieve them, whether it's to do with your marketing outreach, whether it's to do with the user journeys on the page and the, ultimately the conversions. Um, but yeah, set those out, understand what people, how people are behaving and, and you know, continuously iterate essentially it's, it's uh, unfortunately a never never a finished job this always uh, needs to be updated uh, and last but not least thank you for listening um, appreciate you know I've seen loads of kind of repeat names in the these webinars over the last few months so it's really great to see people coming back um, we're currently planning out the next uh, batch of webinars that will be coming up um, hopefully over the next couple of months so um, yeah you know it takes is it does take a, a bit of effort to get them get them sorted and get them up and running so i really appreciate everybody coming along um if anyone's got any feedback or wants to like i say suggest any topics thanks for the look a studio idea there um, and maybe we'll do one a bit more detail in in times in terms of uh, google Anal analytics goals well i can't speak now um but yeah if anyone else has anything else um they want to they can think of that would be they think would be interesting then yeah please share it and uh, i'm happy to look at it otherwise um have a lovely day please and feel free to connect and um yeah i'll hopefully see you soon Thanks, guys.